The calling to order the 2021 Georgia Convention of the Libertarian Party. First thing, I'll hand it over to Amber, our secretary, so she can give the credentials committee report. Hey y'all, we have 18 voting delegates, four and four, that is seven. Uh, motion to, uh, from the, uh, out of order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get through the, uh, reports. Oh, okay. We have to adopt the agenda for sure. Yeah, we have to adopt the agenda. Sorry, maybe not the reports. We'll get through the agenda. Okay. Sorry, and everybody, if you weren't here for the announcement, the reason you're seeing me instead of Ryan is he just found out his daughter, uh, tested positive for COVID. He was feeling some symptoms and he left, so he had a somewhat prepared me, so please do, uh, you know, bear with me here. We're gonna make it work. So, adoption of the agenda. Can we get the agenda on screen? This is the agenda. Yes, sir. I have one question. On the 18 people that are credentialed, uh, is there a way we can get a copy of that list to make sure that it's accurate? Can you see the secretary for that? No, I mean, I just there seems to be a lot more than 18 people around wondering. Yes, sir. Right now, the uh, delegates are anybody who's a member of the, the Georgia party and has been for over 367 days. Usually how these things work is the very first motion that's made is to allow everybody here to become a delegate, and I suspect that'll still be the case. Do we have the agenda on the screen? Oh, the agenda is on the screen. Oh, that is the agenda. Wow. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the agenda. All right. Second. All right. Here are the motion from Mr. Metz and the second from a bunch of people. Do you need the seconds, Amber? Yes, please. Chase Oliver. Second. Chase. All right. All right, so all in favor of adopting this agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, agenda is adopted. So chairman's report, this was Ryan's report, so I'm probably gonna butcher it, but I think he wanted to just do a rundown of the different committees, what they do, and hopefully get some of you involved. Uh, so let's see, IT committee. Start out with the most exciting one. That's Danny Dolan. He is our um, tech director. We, I don't know, manage the CRM, do all sorts of emailing. And do you want to speak to it, Danny, or am I? Uh, okay. Uh, we have, uh, uh, as I said, the Civic CRM is a database and contact management system that we have from National that is prov uh, provided to the state and, and county level leaders. Uh, it is useful for finding volunteers, for sending bulk emails to people in your affiliate in your area or throughout the state. Uh, and it is um, uh, also good for managing phone banking and a number of other things that I, I'm still learning about. Uh, event registration. Uh, it is available, like I said, it's available all the way down to county leaders. I encourage you to do this. I've given access to everyone. Um, also, your lpgeorgia.com email address comes through us. Uh, I encourage you, if you are doing party business, please use your lpgeorgia.com email address. It looks professional. And also, if there's ever any legal business where someone requires your party-related emails, it is good to have them separate from, from your personal emails. So, uh, we also manage website and we have Basecamp, Slack, Facebook, a number of ways to keep in touch with the party. And, uh, yep. and, and oh, and we are also working on a uh, um, data project where, uh, a data warehousing project where we will be, uh, be collecting uh, data, uh, voter data and, and uh, other uh, information that will be uh, useful and relevant for campaigns and other efforts. Uh, and and uh, that, that is still getting started. Uh, working on a cloud project so that when we run a campaign, you can know about the voters in your area and reach out to them. Okay. Right, thank you. 
So really, any sort of tech skills we can use, you know, you heard him mention all sorts of different things from data science to whatever, design and email and analytics, just, yeah. So if anybody is interested, we do have sign-up sheets. I think they're still in the uh, reception area. I don't know what else you'd call that. Reception area, yeah. And uh, so please, you know, put your name down there if you're interested and we'll be in contact with you. And I think the, uh, you know, as far as the tech side of things, we have Slack. That's for communication. It'd be great if everybody got on there. We chat, we have a good time, just have discussions. And then we have Basecamp, which is also important if you want to get involved with, you know, activism. If you want to get, you know, push a certain bill. Like we have a Defend the Guard bill uh, group in there where we're all in there, you know, kind of brainstorming. It's a little war room to find out how can we move this forward and all sorts of projects like that from youth engagement to each of the different committees. Um, so the next thing I would think, I'm probably going to miss some of these, so please speak up if, you know, I'm skipping over your committee. But, oh, here, here's the okay. slide. Here's the slides. This is good. This is what I was expecting. So, executive committee. So, we will be having elections today for the executive committee, known as the XCOM. We'll have both regional, represent, uh, regional representatives and at large. Um, the way I see this, and I'm sure this isn't a by the you know, policy manual or by the bylaws explanation, but it's kind of just a commitment to get involved a little bit. When I became an at-large representative last year, I just kind of you know jumped on Slack. I jumped on uh, you know not base camp at the time, but I started networking with people and seeing how I could help. And then we have the once a month um, meetings where you know we can pass resolutions as the party and all sorts of you know whatever comes up in those appointing uh, you know different directors and whatnot. Let's see ballot access committee. I'm sure. Don't have to say too much about ballot access. As libertarians, you're all aware of how they obtain this, and especially as Georgia libertarians, you know that we have some of the worst ballot access laws in the country. So that committee is devoted to you know getting us ballot access, making ballot access better. I see, we just had uh, Mr. Callan walk in, and he is a champion of that, suing the state. Convention committee, um, you know, that's what made this possible, which I feel like this year was Angela. She is a convention committee, so thank you for that. And she's moving on to, you know, bigger things. She'll be the, and the, oh, she is on the national convention committee, so I'm not sure if we'll have her next year. So if anybody wants to plan a great convention for next year for the state party, it can be anywhere in Georgia, you can take over just so that it's in your hometown. You know, if you don't want to drive across the state, that's what you know. The convention committee does makes all of this happen. Thank you again. Bylaws committee, so and platform. These kind of go hand in hand. I'm not sure if we really had. Uh, maybe John, were you on either of these? No. Uh, I was involved in platform 2019. Okay. Not this year. So I'm not sure that we really had anybody for platform and bylaws this year. But this would be a committee where. They come up with recommendations to pass certain bylaws, and they would come up at convention, give those recommendations, and you know I feel like that maybe carries a little bit more weight than if you just submit something to the secretary to be voted on, you know, ad hoc. It, it shows that you know the committee thought about it, they perfected the wording, and you get to come up here and kind of give your uh, view on it, and hopefully, you know, get whatever bylaw you think is good passed, or you know clean up the bylaws. I know there's a lot of uh, confusing things in there. It looks like ours haven't been really touched in a while. So we could definitely use some you know, hand in that. Platform is another one that's very similar. We have a pretty uh, standard platform. It seems to be very close to the national platform. So if you thought, you know, maybe there's something I want to add or subtract, or maybe I want to keep it as is, I don't know, join the platform committee and you know, make that happen and get up here, present your proposals and sell them. Uh, that would be for convention next year. Communications is a, another one where, you know, it's in the name, where this person would be communicating outward, making, you know, sending emails, doing, making calls, seeing if, you know, maybe it kind of overlaps a little bit even with membership, because I feel like you got to communicate outward to get these uh, people to renew and things like that. 
We have a new uh, communication yes. director who is not able to be with us today. Yeah, what's his name? Logan. Logan. Logan Alexander. Logan Alexander. So he is our communications director. I think another big part of this is um, social media. You know, we're spreading out all over social media now. We have the old standards like Facebook and Twitter, and it does look like ours are a little bit neglected. I think we have, you know, decent presence on Facebook, not so much on Twitter. Now, you know, who knows where, I think we're on MeWe and other places, and we could really use people to, uh, you know, present good messaging through these platforms. So I don't even know necessarily if you need to be a director or on the committee or anything for that. If you're interested in running one of our social media uh, presences, just let, and I think that's at the chair's discretion, so whoever ends up being the chair after today, you know, let us know, let them know, it won't be me, and, you know, we'll make something happen. Membership, that's another one where we could really use a lot of help. We need people that can help get people to renew, get more people to join. Do we have a new membership director? Yes. And their name is? Uh, L or Ellie? Ellie. Uh -huh. And our last name but I'm not 100% sure. Potentially Ellie Keene. Yes, I don't know. All right. So I think that's... She's new, new. Yeah. She's right well, that's new. great. Yeah. And none of, you know, I've been telling people that these are what they, you make them. Nobody... Oh, never mind. I'm going to stop there because I'm pretty sure I'm about to say something wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. But anyway, moving on. Oh, wow, more committees. <laughs> Karis, Ellie Karis. Is Ellie right? Karras? Yes. All right, well, thank you to Ellie Karras, our new membership director. Hopefully, they will be able to, you know, get people to renew, get people to join, that sort of thing. I'm sure there's way more to it than that. Those are just what's, you know, coming into my head right now. Outreach. I feel like that, you know, it's kind of synonymous with activism in a way. Getting out there, spreading the libertarian message. You can see how these are a lot, you know, intertwined. There's a lot to have outreach and communications, you can see how they would definitely um, you know, have a pretty good Venn diagram there. Mm -hmm. Affiliate support would be, uh, yeah, let's let Danny talk about that. Again. He is the yeah. expert. Again, so yes, affiliate support, we found, uh, I'll be talking about this more tomorrow, but we found a lot of new affiliates last, uh, last year, the county, part, county and multi-county parties, and uh, we have tools and resources. Again, I'll talk about this more tomorrow, but we want our local parties to grow because that's where a lot of the real action happens, that's where the message is spread, is, is at home. So, there you go. Thank you. Um, candidate support. So, supporting candidates, again, in the name. I don't know if there's too much to say on that one. Finding candidates, that's a big one. Um, not to put you on the spot. Is that John? Yeah, John. I wasn't sure if it was you or Mark, because both of you were very and involved in that. Do you have anything to say on that, or is it pretty self-explanatory? You no, know, I think you're in the right track there. Uh, supporting candidates, uh, recruiting candidates, training candidates, um, knocking on doors for candidates, um, and, and trying to match with volunteers who have something to offer with uh, candidates who have something they need. Okay. So, anybody who maybe wasn't able to hear that, finding candidates, supporting them, find, you know, finding out what they need, and providing them with those resources, I know we have a lot of people very talented in the party who can do different things, whether it's run a campaign or build a website or design flyers or whatever. And a lot of times it seems like it's the candidate support committee that's connecting those people. So you might have somebody running and they don't know the first thing about building a website or you know doing a press release, and it would be John and the candidate support committee that would really connect the two and make it happen. Public policy, that is... Um, you know, pushing different bills, pushing against different bills. This is definitely not my expertise here, so I'm definitely butchering this one, I know, but this has been one where uh, Laurie has been the committee chair, and she's been involved with, you know, monitoring everything that's happening in the state house and seeing all the awful things they're doing and letting us know, and maybe seeing a few good things they're doing and pushing that. Uh, I think that's one where you know, this, that's another one. You can make it whatever you want. You know, we have opportunity there to you know, put out scorecards. Uh, again, not my area, so 
that's not one that I'm going to be great at explaining, and I'm not sure that we have a representative, but you can imagine by seeing the name of most of these, what they do, and we just need people to uh, you know, get involved and kind of make it whatever. Oh, I thought I was done. Youth <laughs> <laughs> engagement and fundraising. Thank you for getting them all out there at once. Um, youth engagement, engaging the youth. So we have Justin Jones, who is the chair of that. I don't think he was able to make it today unless he snuck in at the last moment. Uh, he goes to University of West Georgia, so that's you know a very prime spot to engage with you know, young libertarians, different clubs like YEL and SFL or whatever, and just kind of get campus activism going and you know get people involved in county and state libertarian parties if that's what they want to do you know, during college or when they get out, whichever. Fundraising, um, that's something that I've tried my hand out a little bit just because I wanted to learn it. I'm not sure how much of it I've learned, but I've raised a little bit of money for the party just because it was something I was interested in trying. So that shows you where the bar for that one is. If it's, some, if it's something that you're interested in, or any of these are something that you're interested in a little bit, don't talk yourself out of it. Just you know, come try it out. Uh, I got a question. Yes, Nathan. Do you have to be on the executive committee to be part of these awesome subcommittees? Oh, thank you for that. No, you do not. You do not have to be part of the executive committee. Um, I'm not sure that there's any requirement besides being a member, probably. All right. No, don't even have to be a member. Don't even have to be a oh, member. That's, that's nuts. All right. All that we can get. All right. Yeah. Anyone off the street could do this. All right. All of these, all of these are part of base camp. So base yes. Camp, base camp is where we do the business of the party for affiliates of the state alike. Yes. So myself, um, Danny. And Ryan, we've all worked really hard to put together base camp so that if you're interested in a thing, get on base camp, let that let Danny know, he'll add you to those, these particular ones, and you can engage and just get a feel for what's going on. Um, and, and learn a little bit more about it, whether or not you want to dive in or not. Yes, so. thank you. So yeah, base camp is project management and sort of like team management. It's not social media, you're not coming on to post memes or anything like that. It's where you come on and engage in whatever activism or committee or whatever you decide to be involved with. All right, so uh, moving on, I don't know that, yeah, Chairman's Awards. So there were two people who really stood out in the chair's, um, you know, in mine, in a lot of people's minds this year and just did a killer job. And the first one I've already recognized, and I'm going to recognize her again. Angela, thank you for putting on this convention. <laughs> and there was a lot of issues, people canceling on her, people being mean to her, uh, being however many months pregnant she is, and having however many kids she already has. <laughs> I was telling somebody yesterday, because they were comparing themselves to her, like, oh, I don't really know if I want to get involved because of how much Angela does. I'm like, trust me, nobody does as much. So thank you, Angela, and we have a oh gift goodness. card for you. Oh. Yay. And the other person, you can see even right now that he's helping me out as I stumble my way through this, is Danny, and I'll come up to you. You don't have to come down here. <laughs> Danny has been amazing. I met him at the convention last year, and he's just like so helpful and welcoming. Helped me get involved, and you know, I didn't know what to do at first. Got me on some projects. You know, I don't know. There's just so many things behind the scenes that I wouldn't even be able to name right now because you know, he's the chair of the IT committee, like I said, the, uh, you know, there's just, I couldn't even begin to name all the stuff that that touches and is running without us noticing. So thank you so much, Danny. This is the one. 
This is the one paid position within the party. Oh, we have text to read. So the executive director is responsible for overseeing the administration program strategic plan of the Libertarian Party of Georgia and includes duties like fundraising, marketing, outreach, and reports to the executive committee. So that is the official description I think that, that's in the um, policy manual, I believe. But basically, we need somebody to come in and help raise funds, and that's where a bulk of the compensation would come from because it's commissioned, where I don't remember the schedule off the top of my head, but if you raise so much money, you get whatever percentage, and that increases the more money you raise. So if anybody is a good fundraiser, they could potentially make this a lucrative opportunity. Um, if fundraising is not your thing, but you're just a great administrator, this might still be your thing. You would get paid an hourly rate. It's pretty low, but it's you know, it's a it's a it's job. A it's a job. It's right? So, but I think we are wanting somebody who could really take lead with and work with the fundraising committee and make fundraising happen, and that would be in, you know the executive directors best interest because they would be getting commission checks. So if anybody is interested in that, please see me. Or if you don't want to talk to me today, or if this word spreads around, uh, my name is Zach Varnell. That's Z-A-C-H. And you can email me at zach.varnell at lpgeorgia.com. And I'm taking resumes, CVs, just people wanting to chat, whatever. So please see me about that and spread the word to anybody you think might make a good executive director. And that would have been my part, but let's continue. Mm -hmm. Treasurer's report. I don't believe Evan is here, is he? No. All right. So we do not have a treasurer here to give this report. I also failed college accounting, so this probably isn't <laughs> great. <laughs> but here are the numbers. <laughs> Uh, is there anybody who would like to explain this, or is it pretty self-evident? Looks like we did all right. Yeah. I'll take questions. We can get any questions answered if anyone has anything, but I'm not the person that can explain this to you, even though it does look relatively simple. If there's no questions, we'll move on. What's the balance on the account? Yeah. What is the balance on the account? How much money do you have in bank? How much money do we have in that? Yeah. Is there another? Yep, there we go. Where is it? 31,000. 31,000. So we are in the black. Last year that got applause. But. <laughs> so, um, so I have a question. Yes. And back to the previous slide, you had expenses of 13, 15,000. Can you just enlighten us a little bit with what you did with that 15,000? Okay. So I'm assuming that this is all expenses. Part of that would have been this convention, although it has now paid for itself. Thank you, stay, Angela. And I'm not sure if those numbers of it paying for itself have been updated. Probably yeah. not, no. But and we also, we have things like uh, our base camp software costs $1,000 a year. I think we're getting good uh, use out of it, and so far it's been worth it. We pay for MailChimp hosting. We Anything else? Our insurance. Insurance, thank you. Uh, we had some events last year. Yeah, we sponsored a few events that we may have gotten our money back or held over just for this year. So, uh, for instance, Atlanta Pride, we sponsored, I believe, it was $1,000. And then we moved over to next year. Yeah, and that was moved over to next year, so that would be reflected in that 15000 number. Um, anything else that various? Sorry? Yeah, uh, we raise money directly for the ballot access lawsuit, so I'm not sure if that's included in there or not. That's, that's the asterisk. You see, there's 44,000. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it is. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Well, it does partially, but so in 2019, we spent almost twice that much. Mm -hmm. So what did we not do this year that we did in 2019? I think well, that Evan has a breakdown. Rent. We didn't pay rent. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we, we did cut the office. And Martin just said the storage unit. we didn't pay rent. Okay. Sorry, you mentioned the storage unit? Yeah, we cut the storage we unit. We did not have a storage unit. We did not have an executive director all year. Uh, we did not do very many in-person events. I, I imagine 
in 2019, we may have sponsored more things such as Pride. Yeah, we had a larger, we had a larger convention last year too. A larger space. Yeah, so that's the other thing. We it was a presidential election year, so the convention was much bigger. Mm -hmm. so and it includes question. the money that was not refunded under other provisions, because that's only a half of the legal fees. So it you know, was another four thousand dollars in 2019 that was not refunded. Okay. So there's a number of things. Okay, so next question on the donations. It looks like they dropped by about a third. Is there a plan to change that direction for next year? Well, I'm not sure if I'm the one to ask. All I can do is reiterate the uh, that we do need fundraising to have a direction and for someone to take charge. Everything I've done has been very ad hoc. I've kind of dipped my toe in here and there. And I'm not sure, I have done some fundraising, but I'm not sure if we had anybody who was dedicated to it. So uh, we do have a new uh, uh, store on the LP Georgia website that is done with a partnership with Proud Libertarian, where for a donation you can receive merchandise, donation to party. So that is, that is a thing. And then, uh, as I said, we need to get direct solicitation fundraising going yeah. as well. Um, Ryan has a total breakdown of what the report, the treasurer's report from last year. Um, because I asked, I was like, where's the whole breakdown? So, even if it's not on here, I'm sure we can get it. Yeah. So you can it I can't. Yeah. 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 And that's the detail thing. It is up and running. Yeah, that way everybody can see it yeah. on yeah. where it's at. Yeah. yeah, perfect. Yeah, and I'm sorry I don't have all the answers for you. This really isn't my wheelhouse. But if uh, you want to email me later, I will be happy to uh, you know interface with Evan and get these answers for you. I'm sure Ryan would do the same, and whoever ends up being the chair after this uh, convention, I'm sure would be happy whether it's Ryan or somebody else to answer these questions. Yes, Ms. Uh, Mr. Uh, Clara. Two quick questions. Um, two quick questions. So in, in that donation, do you guys charge or have membership dues? We do. It's thirty dollars a year to be a member of the state. Okay, and then on top of that, uh, what is the maximum amount that any one person can donate to you guys in the state party? All right. The question was, what is the maximum amount that anyone can donate to the state party? And that's not an answer I have, but I bet somebody in the room does. State, I believe, around three, a little over three grand to the state party directly. All right. Nathan says it's around three grand. That's per calendar year. Per calendar year. I believe that is for calendar yes. Does that sound about in line with Florida? <laughs> okay. All right. If there's, oh, yes, sir. Because I'm facing the there, I'm facing the wrong way or something. But I understand that um, a breakdown of, of the finances is available online. Yes. Um, our treasurer has emailed those out to us every month, and they are available to the executive committee. Yes, sorry, and they are available on Basecamp. And I believe if anyone wanted to review those themselves, we could uh, make them available on demand. So, you know, if you want to reach out to me, the chair, Ryan, whoever, Ryan the future chair, whoever that ends up being. Or Evan himself, although he will not be our treasurer, sadly, after today, he is very accommodating and I'm sure would uh, walk you through it. Um, does any, any more questions? All right, let's move on from this. Bylaws, rules, bylaws and rules committee report. So I don't believe we have anybody to give. Uh, this, this is where uh, some Yes. Okay, bylaws has been changed, has been. Uh, yes. So these are not from the bylaws committee, as far as I know, right? They are from people who have submitted them to the bylaws committee. Yeah, these are motions. These are motions, yes. So is there, so, is there a bylaws committee report at all? Um, I do not believe there is a bylaws committee report, except that these are, are the proposed bylaws. Okay. And just in. If, as far as our order of business would be, if they had a report to give that and then take uh, these seven nominations, but if there's no report. Yeah. yeah. So, I believe we could move on. Um, 
we could potentially move on from that, take that as a report, and then come back to it when we vote on bylaws and rules. And take those as motions. That would be a report. Yes. And we'll do the same for the platform, but we can show up on the screen what the proposed platform um, motion is. And we'll take this as a report and come back to it to vote on. Is there only one, Amber? For platform? Yes. So this is the one um, addition to the platform that has been proposed. Can everybody see the screen all right? So we'll take this as a report and go ahead and move on. And there, there were two potential rules changes, uh, bylaws changes. Yes. Um, so is this both of them? This is one. Oh, this is one. So basically, in plain English, I mean, one of them was to mandate that we only do business at convention on Saturdays. And that was Miss Austin's. And then yours, I don't know if you told me what it was. Do you want to just get the report real quick? Or, um, or I'll explain. Explain. Okay. Uh, oh, it's, it has to do with uh, the notice at convention that's published to a newspaper. Just to refine those rules, I believe, because that was another one where it seemed like our bylaw on it was very dated, and Amber's trying to update that. Okay, so moving on. All right, so I believe at this time I will entertain motions such as anything to do with delegates. Yes, sir? I would like to get a read on who is currently delegates or who can come out. And All right. Yes, yeah, so we currently have 18 voting delegates. These are people who are members of the Libertarian Party of Georgia and have been for over 367 days. There is an update to that report. Okay. We now have 20 voting delegates. Quorum is now eight. So, can everybody hear her? Or no. Uh, we come up yes. to the microphone. Uh, yes. Where, are we calling for roll call? <clears throat> yes. Hang on, let me get an order here. We have Jack Aiken, Pamela Alexander, Christine Austin. David Barker, Mark Cohen, Warren Cunningham, Danny Dolan, Francesca Dolan, Mark Douglas, Chrono, Gilead, sorry if I butchered that. I didn't miss mine. <laughs> uh, Zebulon, oh wait, no, sorry. Garrett Holt, Amber Howell, Elizabeth Melton, Ted Metz, John Mons, Mark Mosley, Thomas Nichols, Chase Oliver, Peter Quinones, John Turpish, Zach Farnell, Donna Zedler, and that is it. Yes, sir. Uh, if, I guess as the body, I would like to be added to the list of a lifetime member. Okay. Um, yeah. So that would make core or total twenty one. Twenty one. I gotta go get a calculator. Okay. Matt is not strong to you. Well. Okay. Well, while she figures that out, um, so of those seated delegates. Uh, we could vote on motions right now. Uh, we can take motions. A motion to accept all uh, registered members present as delegates. Second. Okay. Like who has that? Who is the yes, second? That would be a motion to suspend the rules. I'd like to discuss. 
Okay, there will be debate. Um, so that was Danny Dolan making the motion and Chase Oliver seconded. And I'll open the floor to debate. Would anybody like to? Yeah, we're good. Would anybody like to speak in favor of this? Uh, may I recommend the person who made the motion speak for it and then uh, take someone who's speaking against it? Mm -hmm. Would you like to speak in favor of it, Danny, or was is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor of it? Let me. I just don't understand the motion. Are they saying any person who's a, a member now of the Libertarian Party of Georgia no matter how long they've been a member, are going to be delegates today? As long as they're here, yes. So the motion is to make everybody in this room, basically, as long as you're a member of the party, a delegate that is able to vote on these upcoming elections. Point of information? Yes. How many folks are we talking about? How many people do we have present? Amber? That are members. That are less than 365 days. Oh. Yeah, just have them stand. Yeah, so we have. Who are, sure. we to, who are we trying to vote in? We're yeah. talking about her. So everybody in this room. No, everybody in this room, minus the 21. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So everybody in this room who is a member of the party, except the 21 that are already delegates, would be who we we're trying to add. And who are they? So you're just the only one. No, I'm surely not the only one. I think there are more than that. These are the people we're trying to vote in. Like most of our active members. <laughs> Everybody stand and keep standing so I can count. Are you raising your hand? No, I'm voting in. Do you pay the $30 for the year membership? Or do you pay the, what is it, 150 for the annual, for the lifetime? Yeah. Something like that? So if, if you pay for this convention, you will be a member of the party as per our change of bylaws last convention. Wait, so if you pay so for this convention, you, pay for this convention you, you would be a voting delegate. So does that answer your question about what we're doing? So the people standing right now are people who are members of the Libertarian Party of Georgia that have been for 360 Six days or less. And they are present, and the motion is to allow them to become seated delegates and vote. Point of information. No, no, that's what I have asked yes, for, like, for like three months. Can I give a quick history about what this is about, just real quick? Uh, Let me ask another question before you get history. Does this change, the, will this change the forum so that half the people don't show up tomorrow, we have no forum? There will there probably be no business tomorrow. We'll get done today. No quorum's necessary. No, no, it, tomorrow is just speakers and fun yeah. and hanging out. Tomorrow is not tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> right. Would you consider speaking in favor of it? Yeah, I would speak in right. favor. So I'll recognize you to speak in favor. Right. So I'm one of the long-time members past, past chair of Georgia. Um, one of the reasons we set this up originally was to prevent a takeover of the party on a given day. In the past, what would happen is we would have factions of people not associated with the liberty movement show up, buy, buy convention tickets, and then take over the party or potentially take over the party. So what we do is it prevents that from happening. So we set this up so in case we look around like, we don't know these folks have not been active, we can say no. So we look around and we see active people like, oh, this is good, these are not here to just destroy the water. So just kind of let you guys know that's why we have this set up going forward so we can stop a, a takeover on a given weekend. Yeah. Did everybody hear that all right? Okay. Just a reminder, we also have a microphone here if anybody's soft-spoken. Not that you are, sir, but anybody who may want to address everybody, feel free. Uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. I'm confused on the 367 days ago. Are we waiting that now? Yeah, that's what we're at. That is what we were waiting. Well, we're going to put yeah, that in. That you're right. So we put it in to prevent this from happening, but now as an active party, we're sitting here looking at that. That's apparently not happening today. We're not being taken over. Now we can get rid of that rule. For today. It, it we is can a suspend of the bylaws that on convention day, the requirement for 367 days can be waived. That is what has been moved. So so yes, this that. is this exact motion is yes, mentioned in the bylaws as a possibility. I'm good. All right. All right. Anybody else would like to speak in favor? You're supposed to go in favor and then against. I'm going to rob this rule. Oh, okay. So, all right. Would you like to speak against? I would like to speak against. So I know that this has been tradition, and we've done this year after year. 
But I am looking at a situation where we only had 18 voting members show up, and there's a lot more people in the room than that. And I'm getting uncomfortable with having people who have not been around for very long vote on making these very important decisions that we're going to make today. We need, in this party, we need continuity. We need experienced people who've been around and know the ins and outs of the party making decisions. And I'm not against anybody joining and chipping in and joining the committee and helping out, but I do think that the decisions we're making today need to be made by people who've been around for a little while and have a little bit of experience and know what they're voting on. So I am getting more uncomfortable with this, even though it's been tradition, and I am speaking against it, particularly because of today, where we have so few members that actually do have that experience. I think we need to vote against this motion, although I will say I would be in favor of making specific exceptions, as there are a couple of people who've been long-time members whose membership has the action the past in some days. So as you're voting on this, keep in mind that we can make another motion to allow for other certain exceptions. But I am speaking against just allowing everybody who showed up today to vote. Can I speak to that? Or do you want to speak for or against? Okay, yeah, since we're since we're at uh, well by what Miss Austin just said, let's take a four and then I'll come back to you. Okay. Angela? So my thing, I definitely understand that, um, because I definitely understand the concern with people showing up like the day of. But then there's people like me who, I mean, my membership did lapse. I've been a member since 2015, I think. So my membership did lapse. So I would fall into that category. But I'm not sure that everybody that is newer does. Like I have an affiliate member here, Jeffrey, who has been super active in my affiliate, but just became a member this year. And then there's also people who, you know, I mean, they, for a long time, were getting, you know, they didn't want to be a member member. So, I mean, I understand, I definitely understand that concern, but I think if we start also, I think we start getting into dangerous territory if we start picking and choosing exceptions to, a, to something like that, because then, it's almost like, a, it, to me, it's almost like a favoritism. So I, I definitely understand it, but I also don't think that we should turn turn people away in that regard if they showed up today. Like, I, actually, somebody did show up today and was like, oh, you know, and I, I'm sort of, a lot of people actually here knew him, um, but he wasn't a member. And I was like, oh, yeah, you can go on and pay your dues. I actually think it's a great way to get people to join the party. So. I mean, I think it's, it could be argued either way, but I'm definitely for allowing you know, the people that are members to vote because if you look at that group, most of them were, are crazy active and have been this past year. You're right, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm, sorry. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm against carte blanche acceptance of, of, of anybody who's paid, you know, really up to this point is, is almost identical to what she's, she's mentioned here. Um, the fact that you know you might be new and you're like, hey, I want to get involved, and that's that's great. There's an education component to to doing party politics, right? And this happens in, in all the other different party, political uh, parties that exist out there. And I think that there are there there should be a, a, a bit of a we'll say a cutoff point where perhaps maybe we can modify this motion to say, okay, if you have paid for a membership, except for those individuals who paid for it, we heard earlier that um, uh, if you bought your convention ticket, right, you're automatically a member. I would say those who have paid for a party membership it, up until the date start of this convention, right? So those who paid for a convention ticket, um, but they're just brand new as of today as a member, ought not be uh, on that approved okay. membership list. And that, that would give us a little bit of more of a wiggle room to allow more people who maybe let their, their membership lapse, but have been really engaged in the party uh, for, for at least six months, nine months, 11 months to participate because they've learned a little bit about what's going on and what we're doing. So that would be my, that's why I'm, I'm uh, kind of objecting to it, if, unless we can make an ex, uh, kind of a, that extension or exception. Uh, just to be clear, I don't believe that admission to the convention buys membership. Not so this year. I know that was just a detail of what you said, but uh, they would have had to have bought membership 
and admission. That, that's or actually shutdown. on the uh, ticket form. It says yeah. it does buy membership this year. Yeah. Okay. So it does buy membership? Yeah, it's on the bottom. So on our form it says when you buy a ticket, you're, you buy membership. Right, well, it's a ticket. And that form says that it'll be honored. So. Are you speaking in favor? Yeah, I want to speak in uh, favor. Mr. Oliver. So, uh, reasons to speak in favor of this. First, we, uh, among the people who stood up just a minute ago, uh, you had former state party chairs, our Senate nominee for the year 2020, and the person who planned this convention who would not be able to vote if we don't pass this. And I don't want to go through one-on-one -on -one passing each individual person. Let's just allow the people who came here and who also spent $175. People don't do that willy-nilly. They want to come here and do the business of the party. Let's make this the most inclusive we can and allow these people who came here today and who are newer members to come do the business of the party so we can continue to grow this party. Doing uh, you know, and not voting for this basically limits the number of people who are going to be voting and the interest in this convention and moving forward. So I say, let's pass this. Let's allow those who are here, who paid for their convention tickets, who came here to do the business of the party, who are maybe newer members, including our 2020 Senate candidate, uh, the woman who planned this convention, and former state party chairs to come here and vote and do the party business. I think we should vote for this. Thank you. Uh, we are coming up on almost 10 minutes of debate. I'll recognize the gentleman in the back. Are you speaking against? No, I have it. I have a question. With, does the previous speaker wish to make an amendment to the motion based on what he said? Are you, are you, do you mean Mr. Oliver? That's not what he said. So let's reiterate what his motion was. I uh, believe, correct me if I'm wrong here, Danny, it was to allow everybody who's present and a member of the Libertarian Party of Georgia to become a voting delegate today. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, then, and then this gentleman who was speaking against had what sounded like a, an amendment. No, it was not an amendment. He was basically just saying this is how he would prefer to do it. Well, would he like to make an amendment to the motion? Would you like some assistance? Yes. yes. Would you like to get well, I'll treat you as a parliamentarian. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Recording it, so don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Right. You guys can be seated. How many people are? No, five. No, five. Five. Second. Uh, are you a seated delegate? I, I know you are. That's just the gentleman in the back, because uh, right now seated delegates are the only people who can do that. Well, just all the questions, gentlemen. Here. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Question has been called. You're not a part of the. <laughs> <laughs> I so the question to call. Let's get on the voting. So all those in favor of Mr. Dolan's amendment, 
to allow all members currently here to become voting delegates, please say aye. 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 And all opposed? No. Aye. Uh, eyes have it. All right, so if anybody has not checked in with Amber, any member who's here, I think you're all here, anybody, please do so now, and she'll get us the updated totals. But let's go at ease for how long you need. Point of order, Mr. Chair. How will we designate that we are voting members? Because we haven't been given any voting chips. Not everybody in this room is a member of the party, so we're not just visiting. <clears throat> So I would think in a close um, call, we could call for division and check it at that point. If uh, we do have stickers indicating various things, is that something that the stickers are indicating? Yeah, all, all of the voting delegates should have little green stickers. If I called your name and you do not have a green sticker, please come get a yes. green sticker. Everybody else that we just voted in, please come. So, yeah, let's update the stickers. If you have no sticker or a non-green sticker and you are a member, please come see Amber. We are going to recess for 10 minutes, or at ease for 10 minutes. Cool. All right, let's do this. Uh, I'm, I'm having technical difficulties. Uh, well, wait, so never mind. <laughs> Take that gab and slam back. Um, also, things got a little unruly. I wasn't controlling it. Let's, from now on, any motions, please come up to the microphone. And when you're called upon, tell us your name and your motion. And let's do the same for anybody speaking for or against. Please come up to the microphone. You can be at that one or you can be at this one, whichever. But. That's it. As soon as we get the slides back, uh, oh, we don't even need the slides, I guess. Amber may have more information for us. What? Do you want to do the count now? Yeah, yeah. is there anybody that I so, did not get a sticker first? Yeah. Any one? Yeah, so anybody who. Do you want to count the green stickers? Do you want to count the green stickers? I do. I just want to double check. So can anybody, everybody, with a green sticker please stand up? Do you just want to tell me what was next on the slides, officer elections? 
No, bylaws. Bylaws. Is that right? Well, let's do bylaws. Whatever. <laughs> All right. So we have two bylaws proposals. Um, the first is from Miss Christy Austin. She will be presenting what the intent of the bylaw is and giving her a you know, reason for it. Do you want to speak here or there? Either one. Okay. You can look at the people I'm talking to. Okay. Um, is this good? Yeah. Okay, so my resolution is to change the bylaws to require that convention business be held on a Saturday. Um, just for clarification, convention business is defined as, let me make sure I don't miss anything, a nomination of candidates, election of party officers, changes to bylaws, changes to the platform, officers' reports, and committee reports. Um, the reason I'm bringing this to the table is because, um, well, look around at all the missing faces. Um, I talked to a lot of people over the past couple of weeks, and many of them just were not able to get here on Friday. It's the first time that I'm aware that we've ever held business during what's traditionally considered business hours, and a lot of people just could not do it. And I think it's really important that we bring, that we make the convention accessible to as many of our members as possible because this is really a lot for a lot of people who are not on the executive committee this is their one chance to have their voice heard this is their one chance to be part of what are very important decisions that will be made and i don't want this to happen again when we're excluding this many people so i'll read this the resolution to change the bylaws to require convention business to be conducted on Saturday, whereas the business session of the annual convention of the Libertarian Party of Georgia is the only official way for members of the Libertarian Party of Georgia to express their will on important issues such as officer elections and platform changes, and whereas the Libertarian Party of Georgia has an obligation to its members to make the convention accessible to as many members as possible, and whereas it is beneficial to the Libertarian Party of Georgia to have as many members in attendance at the convention as possible because the process of engaging in debate and considering multiple viewpoints generally results in better decisions. And whereas it is commonly accepted in our culture that working hours are Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and many of our members work, therefore be it resolved that the following text shall be added to Article 7, Section A of the Bylaws of the Libertarian Party of Georgia. That text is that the business portion of the convention must be conducted on a Saturday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. The business portion of the convention includes officer reports, committee reports, nomination of candidates, election of party officers, changes to bylaws, and changes to the platform. And then, is it on the slide? It's not on the slide. It is. Oh, no. Okay. So currently, Article 7, Section A reads as follows An annual convention shall be held on or before the latest day allowed by state law. So this amendment would change that to read, an annual convention shall be held on or before the latest day allowed by state law. The business portion of the convention must be conducted on a Saturday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. The business portion of the convention includes the officer's reports, committee reports, nomination of candidates, election of party officers, changes to the bylaws, and changes to the platform. I move that we adopt this resolution. Second. So moved. It was the second. Who was the second? I think Jack Aiken was. Jack Okay. Do we do against? Yeah, we do with right. right. Question about whether these are yes, Mr. Cowley. Does this affect what we're going to do today? Does this take us offline? This would take effect after today's convention. It doesn't say that. I think, is that not how it is with everything that happens it is. at convention? It is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, typically, your bylaw amendments go into effect at the end of business unless you suspend the rules. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everything that's decided here will be in effect after convention. So, chair, vice chair, whatever. Would anybody like three minutes to speak against this? I'm Mr. Dolan. I can speak against. Uh, Mr. Dolan was first. Oh. 
following the protocol to say my name and come to the microphone. Uh, my name is Danny Dolan, and speaking as a volunteer for this year's convention committee, uh, last year's convention was held on a Saturday and Sunday. Saturday had our speakers and panels, uh, and our presidential debate on Saturday, and our business on Sunday. This rule would not allow for that. This year, the intention at the beginning of the convention planning process was to have another Saturday-Sunday convention. After going through several venues and landing on this cur current location as the only available one, we were unable to reserve Saturday and Sunday due to a uh, pre-existing conflict on the theater schedule. I, recogn we rec I recognize that the Libertarian Party has an obligation to make its members' convention as accessible to as many as possible. I recognize that many of us, myself included, have during the week jobs, and I have had to take off a full day, not just today, but also yesterday as well, to help prepare for this. I have also had to secure uh, child care for my wife and myself for today and tomorrow to be a part of this. Uh, it is inconvenient. It is unpleasant. But I am willing to do this for the party. Adopting this rule precludes future convention committees from making choices to deal with unforeseeable circumstances in scheduling. And after this last year, where so many schedules have had to be upended for so many meetings for so many of us, I think that it's only prudent that we allow for flexibility. I certainly accept the idea that it should be a best practice to avoid having business during a working week. I uh, would even re uh, accept it being a policy manual recommendation. But by making it a bylaw, it is binding, and there is no flexibility to deal with circumstances that may change from year to year. Thank you. Now, would anybody else like to speak in favor? Mr. Oliver, I'll speak again. two I'll speak minutes. Again. Yeah. Uh, against. So, uh, point, point of order. Mm -hmm. Yes. The rule says you need to take a in favor point. Okay. Yeah. It, at yes. the point of information, if there is no, well, I'll speak in favor, there's no necessary for any Jeff speaking yet. trying to raise his hand. Sorry, are you saying if there is nobody, we just, that's the end of it, or? Yeah. Yeah. There's no, not necessary. The gentleman speaking in favor. Okay. But do you intend to speak in favor? Yes. All right. Um, about three minutes. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm speaking in favor of it primarily because of the way it was handled. It wasn't handled very well. Um, when I registered for the convention, I've not been active. I've been very impressed with what's been going on. I'm looking forward to meeting some of, some of the people I've not had a chance to meet in some years here at the party. And yet when I got my confirmation, I was told it started at 4 o'clock. The convention started at 4 o'clock. And um, just in conversation with other people who, who raised the issue about the business meeting, I didn't see it going on that way. And so it is an inconvenience to have it during the week. I do appreciate these notions of having to accommodate what's actually going on in life. I think that's an important thing. But I've got to say, in the brief moments I've been involved in the party here, uh, there seems to be a dysfunction between actually what's important to, to maintain the legal quality of the party and the participation of people who can make decisions, make contributions, and what seems to be convenient. And uh, I, isn't that, because of that, I think we need to speak in favor of it, to put some boundaries and some boxes. And so make an exception then to step out of the box, to do something that's casual. Otherwise, I think we need to have more rigor and protection of what we've got here. Thank you, sir. What's your name? Jack Aiken. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Oliver, three minutes. Uh, yeah, Chase Oliver. So um, I am speaking uh, against this because there are just too many contingencies that we don't really have to consider here today. Like what if we don't finish our business on a Saturday? Are we just to not have business done on Sunday? Because the bylaws would say it has to be done on Saturday. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of times, just like with government, there's good intentions here. People want to have this on a Saturday. I would like to have it on a Saturday too. 
But unfortunately, writing it down into the bylaws ties our hands to the point of where we're now saying, well, we have to do all of our business on Saturday. We can't have our business done on Sunday, just like we did last year. So there's too many things. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't have jobs where they work nine to five during the week. They work nights and weekends. Uh, I worked 13 years in the restaurant industry. You know, if I were still in the restaurant industry, I would be taking two days off to do a Saturday and Sunday convention. So I understand it's convenient for us. It is convenient. And it's what we are planning to do most times. This year being an exception because things get crazy in 2020 uh, and it's continuing into 2021. So I don't see the need to make a rule for something that's basically, this is a one-time thing. Uh, and you know, I don't think we need to be making a bylaw that's gonna tie the hands of future planners of the conventions. And if you really wanna make sure that this convention business happens on Saturday, I recommend you join the convention planning committee and help plan this convention next year. That's what you can do to make sure and ensure that you have a Saturday business meeting. Um, but to make it a bylaw is to me just, it's just too much government involved. You know, it's, it's kind of like making excess red tape in our bylaws and we're a party that speaks against excesses of red tape and planning. So uh, let's speak to that and you know, uh, speak against this. Thank you. Thank you. And by, our, and by our current bylaws, that is all the time we have for debate on a bylaw proposal. So we will move to voting. Um, Point of privilege. Yes, Mr. Metz. Can we ask to modify this motion? You can That's not a point of privilege. You can always move to modify the motion as a voting member. But we just crossed over into voting. So the only well, we can't cross into voting until we have a point of order. Uh, you could have a point of personal privilege to suspend the rules, too. That would, would that not be it a... It would require a vote on the body to suspend the rules to amend. But that would not be a point of personal privilege. Uh, there, the, to suspend the rules is always a... Uh, uh, oh, that's like a routing motion. Okay. Are you proposing to suspend the rules? Briefly, yes. To do what? Um, to ask for some logic for just a moment. To ask for logic? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't follow. All right, well, I, I would just like to make the proposal that we put in the policies and procedures manual that best practice is to have the convention on a weekend. Because again, we can't, or, or a holiday weekend. I mean, there are such things as three weekends. So what is the notion as, 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 as Defining it as, as on a Saturday only is restrictive in case of... Yeah, this is debate, which is over, Mr. Metz. Thank you. Sorry, but... Thank you for my point of personal right? privilege. All right. Call the question. So the question has been called. We are moving on to voting. So all those... Okay, this requires a two-thirds to pass a bylaw amendment or an addition. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. 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 Right. The nays have it. The motion does not carry. Alright, next bylaw proposal is introduced by our secretary, Ms. Amber uh, Powell. Woo! So, you want to speak here or there? Right. Either way is fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'll go right here. So my motion is to clarify section seven or file seven section L um, for general publishing. Um, I feel that it is too vague. There are over 350 general circulation newspapers in the state of Georgia. So I am proposing that we strike up general circulation in the state of Georgia and replace in the state of Georgia with circulation between 174,000 and 20,000 circulation. Wait, that doesn't make sense. So, 174 to 20. 20. My reasoning behind that, AJ. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm an engineer, so I'm a math person. So 20,000 to 174, is that what you mean? Yeah, it's worded weird. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. gotcha. <laughs> yeah, between the two. So AJC has a circulation of 174, 200 ish, and the between the top 10 most circulated papers in the state of Georgia, the lowest on that is Athens Manual Herald, and they have right above 20. 
and print is dying, and so these numbers will change, and that is why the range is so large. Uh, question. So if the AJC has 200,000 subscriptions, will we not be able to announce in that paper because it's over the 174,000? No, 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 no. It does not. It has 173,200. I probably misspoke on but that. But let's say, I don't know, I don't think newspapers are going to get more popular, but if they were and were to go over that number, that 174,000, would that be you know, outside of that realm? I mean... No. Well, to clarify Chase's question, could it just say over twenty thousand? Yes. Yeah, that's yes, I can. I can go with that. Over twenty thousand. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Is it would it be in order to amend? Okay. Yeah. So it's that a motion to amend a friendly amendment. A friendly amendment. I'm cool with that. And what would that update the wording to be? It would update the wording to in the state of Georgia with a circulation above twenty thousand. Okay. Are we able to make that change on the slide, Mr. Goldberg? Uh, yeah, I'm making that now. Thank you. Sorry, Dean. Well, let me make this point. Somebody here from Florida said we should capitalize. One second, space. please. It's, um, are you done? Or are you done? Okay. Unless anybody has Would you have any questions? Typo. They should capitalize state. Okay. Can <laughs> you blame Ryan for that? <laughs> All right. So why don't we get that updated? Yes, sir. Yes. Does that take into account the fact that many newspapers uh, have electronic uh, papers? Yes. So, why is that? so it's by it's whether they're print or electronic. I, I did. I I actually called two of my PR professors and had them help me with the numbers. So circulation is basically subscribers, mm -hmm. effectively. Okay. Questions open? Uh, yeah, Miss Austin. So, right now it looks like, and I can't really read that, so correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like it says just the newspaper in general circulation in the state of Georgia in the original text? Yes. So, what is the advantage of limiting us to circulation over 20,000? We want to publish in a newspaper that's going to have the most reach. General circulation, you could publish in the Harvard Sun that has maybe like 2,000 subscribers versus the AJC that has over 170. So are you required to publish in just one yes. newspaper? So you yes. could choose the Hartwell Times. I, I could. Publish it there. Nobody outside of Hartwell would see it. Pretty much. Is this to comply with Georgia State Law? Yes. yes. Yes, sir. I've got a question for some attorney. I mean, aren't newspapers defined as the legal voice of certain jurisdictions? I mean, isn't there something like a legal publication that you make your legal announcements in, and this is a legal announcement? I mean, it's not really a promo. For counties, yes. For the state at large, uh, I am not aware. I believe that's the intent, is to follow the law set forth by the state of Georgia. As currently archaically written as yes. it is. <laughs> All right, question about the state. Yes, Mr. Yeah. You know, if this is a, if the bylaw is intended to comply with Georgia law, I suppose it is, because who cares if it's published or not, because it's totally useless. So it's probably a law. Um, we don't, nobody looked at the law, right? So we don't know what the law says. And the phrase general circulation may be part of the law. It, it is. So I would put in there a general circulation above yeah. 20,000 just because that's probably what the law says already. Yeah. And we don't want to be out of the law. Is that another friendly amendment? It is a friendly amendment. If, I if no one objects. A, a general circulation above 20,000. So the word general is all we need. So, so with all these amendments, we're going to have to vote on all these amendments. If no one objects to the changes, yeah. Uh, let's start with the first friendly amendment, which was um, above twenty thousand rather than the original, you know, one hundred and seventy-four to twenty, right? Point of order. Yes, sir. Was it seconded? It yes, not. it was not. So we don't have to worry about voting on unseconded motions. She can amend the motion. Uh, yeah. So she can amend the motion to her liking. 
correct? Yes. Uh, and right now, because we've uh, already started a discussion on it, and if no one objects to the change, because there can be discussion on the change, so we just want to keep moving. Right. So you need to ask if there's an objection. Yes. Ah. So does anybody object to the first friendly amendment of changing the wording from what was previously, which was something like circulation? 174 to uh, or 20,000. Yes, to what we see now, above 20,000. Uh, no objections, so we're going to make that change. Does anybody object to Mr. Callan's friendly amendment? Just add the word general. Right, no objections, we'll make that also. All right. One more thing. I said I wanted to capitalize the word state. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's a, you that's a friendly motion. All right. It's a friendly amendment. A friendly motion. It, it is not the word is not required. <laughs> Uh, the secretary can uh, edit the, the text of the, uh, the reflect uh, proper English. All right. Unlike my speaking. <laughs> we, speak, we speak good here. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. That is time for uh, explanation of the bylaw. Would anybody like to speak for it? And then anybody who may want to speak against it can line up also. Or if we feel like we have enough Did somebody second this yet? Second the uh, bylaw proposal. Yeah, this is. A I will second that right. proposal, sir. There Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Allen. I will call the or I will call the question. Thank you. It seems like we weren't going to have any debate on this anyway, and the question has been called without objection. We can. I will allow uh, Mr. Turbush to speak against it. Uh, John Turbush um, speaking against. I. I would rather, um, I don't see any particular need to specify in our bylaws that the newspaper is required. I understand there is a state law that requires us to use a newspaper or what have you, and that's fine. Um, but that the, this is more specific than that law. I feel like we should have two goals in mind. One is to meet the minimum legal requirements and to serve our members. I don't think our members are particularly served by us putting an ad in, you know, the Marietta Daily Journal or what have you. Um, I don't, I don't want to be any more specific. As for what requirements we need to meet, I don't want our bylaws to be any more restrictive than what the Georgia law already is. Thank you. Thank you. So just to clarify one thing, this is already a bylaw, and this is a change to the bylaw. So you can see the area that is stricken out, striped out, I don't know, is what we have now. And the proposed changes are in bold. And do we have anyone who would like to speak in favor of it? If not, the question had been called and we'll move on to voting. And this will require a two-thirds majority to pass. So everybody in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, All against? Nay. That needs to be more than 16 people. That needs to be just 16 people to pass. I'm a, okay. Maybe you should do Yeah, let's call for damage. division. No, no, you're, I'm sure. Sorry. No. Mr. Callan, I'm going to hear you. I was just going to say, you can just, if you didn't understand, ask him to do it again. Yeah. I mean, understood. Okay, let's do it more enthusiastically, I suppose. That will help me. So, all in favor, please say aye. Now, aye. All opposed. Nay. If this were majority, I, don't, I would call it for the aye, but it was just two thirds. Raise your hands for aye. Yeah, so let's count. Let's, do, let's call for division. I can do that as the chair right now, so let's go ahead. So, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Since you're not technically chair, you can vote too. I'm fine. No, he's chair. All those opposed, uh, hands down. All those opposed, please raise your hand.
All right, so the results were that I'm it was 66% in favor, which is exactly two thirds, which is what is needed. So the motion carries. 67, 66, and two thirds percent of each person. Do the math. What's the math? 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 What's Vote to break a tie or break the majority. Chair uh, doesn't vote, and unless it's good, well, sixty-six is not two-thirds. Four is a tie. You can't have a tie in two-thirds. You have only a half. According to our station, yeah, he was currently at home watching the live stream. Go back to the original agenda. Sorry, go back a slide. There you go. All right. So, okay. Does that make it clear? Thank you. Okay. So we are earlier. This was the platform report. Now we can pull up the platform report to see what we're voting on right now. All right. We have one uh, platform addition proposal. It is for secession, and it reads like this. Um, I introduced this, so I'm not really sure how to handle it, except that uh, Shane was going to speak on it. So I'm just going to hand it off to him rather than speaking on it myself. Is that alright with you, Shane? Yep. Okay. Point of information. Yes. Is Shane making the motion since you were acting chair? Mr. Hazel, would you like to also make a motion? Can I make a motion? Yes. And is there a second? Second. Alright. Second. Point of inquiry. Uh, are you the platform committee chair? No, this is not just anything to do with the platform committee. This is just regular old people. I didn't, I didn't know the platform committee member. Yeah, we do have a platform committee, and there's specific rules for, for promoting platforms. It has to go through a, through the committee. 
committee. Yes, that would be if we had the platform committee coming up here and giving pass or do not pass recommendations, which we don't have. Okay. That's, what I, that's, that's all I was asking, if that, yes. if that was part of the platform. We have individuals who have submitted these and they are, you know, can be spoken on okay. and debated. So this is not a platform committee recommendation? This is not a platform committee. No, neither the bylaws are not like that. The platform committee is not suggesting to pass or do not pass. This was introduced, I guess, I sent this to Amber, and Shane is going to speak on my behalf. Is that good? You ready to speak, Shane? Sure. All right. Go for the Oh, you're fine. Oh, you speak up front? Three minutes? I'll try to keep it much shorter than three minutes. You guys are a fan of Joe Rogan. There's a great hit where he does says, if we resurrect Tom Jefferson right now, and brought him over here and said, you guys need to write any new shit. I wrote that with a feather, right? What we're talking about right now is a contract with the United States, which is the United States Constitution, which has absolutely been burned, perverted, bastardized within the United States of America. We as parties, as a state to that contract, have full right as a people and a nation or groups of people or individuals to not be part of that contract that's been broken, perverted, and bastardized as Georgians, as individuals. Now, I go even further than that and say, none of us signed that damn contract. Not one of us. That was 240 something, 40 years ago. It was a coup then, part of the anti-federalists. It is a it is a, I don't know, a chain and a block around our neck now. What we should be talking about is reserving that right as the people of Georgia, as individuals, to walk away from this bastardized slavery that we have now. Um, <clears throat> I think, I mean, I could probably keep going on this, but three minutes is three minutes, and probably better than Mark. Thanks. Sorry. All right, so let's open the floor to debate. Would anyone like to speak for or against? Please line up at the microphone. Can I ask a question first? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you specifically don't mention states. Does this, does this have anything to do with states' rights? Just the state, or is it intentionally left out? Um, I didn't craft this statement. It was borrowed from the former platform of, I believe, the National Party, and now the current California Party. But my reading of it would be that no. Is there something in our platform about states? states St yes, there is a platform about, I believe there's one about states rights. But it doesn't count. I just point out that the political entity includes states. Right. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Right, would anybody else? Like Excuse me? Political or legal entity? It says political entity. I believe the intent was to include everything from political entities, however you define that, to the individual. I mean, it says individual. But I'm happy taking everything out except the individual. <laughs> Are you making that a friendly amendment? Is there a second to uh, an amendment to remove political entities, private groups, and? I would check this out. It's much better like it is, so I don't know. Well, you can ask me. All right, yeah. So there is a second. I'm not really sure how to handle this. Is there an objection to the? Yeah, is there? And there is an objection. Mr. So. All right, so now we start debate and discussion on the amendment before we start discussing. Would you like to make a case or any debate for this amendment? I think Shane made it perfect. Yeah. All right. Would anybody like to make, you know, have a debate or, I'm losing my words here. Would anybody like to debate against Mr. Quinonez's uh, Amendment. Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. Mr. Cowan. You can step up the podium, it's fine. I can talk here. So Martin Cowan, I, I, this was relatively carefully drafted. I mean, they got three groups in there, right? There's the political entities, which include states, counties, 
whatever. Then you have private groups, which includes businesses and other organizations, just any group that's private as opposed to political. And then you have individuals. And it seems to me all three should be included. I agree. Yeah. We can keep all that in there as long as we understand what political entities and what private groups are. I mean, people are arguing over whether a state's a political entity. I would argue it's a legal entity. I mean, there is a difference. So, I mean, if it's, are we arguing for state, like the right of the state of Georgia to, to secede? Sure, if they want to. I mean, but I think it's more important that we're to, Can this be about individuals and this be about political energy. The Libertarian Party of Georgia decides they want to secede. It's fine. And let's be let's be completely honest here. If this is all just it's just a statement. It's not going to. We're not going to be allowed to do it. But it, it sends a message to these people who shut us down in our homes for a year, who have cut off all our income. People, I mean, how many people, uh, people are going to be losing their houses as soon as this moratorium on everything uh, is taken away. I mean, why can't we make this statement? So just to clarify, would your amendment only mention individuals, or would it be to change political to legal? I mean, I would put everyone in there, every organization, every, make it as broad as possible. But individuals is the most important thing, yeah. because we're the Libertarian Party. Did you want to speak? I wanted to speak for the amendment to the motion. Uh, point of information. Uh, the definition of political entity. This helps. It's political body politic, country, nation, um, commonwealth, state, land, a politically organized body of people under a single government. Does that give any clarification? Sure. So that means and, everybody, right? Hey, and also point out that it says this includes, it doesn't say this is limited to, but I get that that one may be a stronger statement. Yes, Mr. Kervish, you're speaking for the I'm, amendment. I'm speaking for the amendment, which my understanding is to remove political entities and private groups and just talk to the right of the individual. Yeah, and can we confirm that with, that that's exactly what you are suggesting? Don't have to. It's, it's well, okay to keep it. I'm okay with keeping everything that's in there and including I'm making it even more inclusive. Point, point of inquiry, do we have an official amendment that we're trying to pass here? Well, or are we having discussion on the main That's topic? what I'm trying to determine. Okay. Okay. So the way that's written, especially with this includes, as you pointed out, it seems to include be inclusive of everybody, including groups, individuals, yeah. everyone. So are you making an amendment to this? Or well, not? I would retract, retract okay. what, my suggestion. And keep it like this, and let's vote on this. Okay. So then I would like to speak against the motion. All right. Speaking against the platform addition. Yes. All right. You're right. Okay. So the the reason I would speak against it is specifically the political entities. Uh, private groups are groups of individuals. If individuals have a right, the private groups have a right because we have a right to associate. And so the private groups is an extension of the individual. However. Political entities, in my plain reading of it, and I think many people who will see this statement, political entities includes states, counties, cities, that do not have rights, they have power. They don't have right. Now, I am not necessarily against any particular secession movement, or necessarily for it. I think I would want to consider it in the facts of that day and that time and what they're up against. But it's not a matter of rights, it's a matter of what what best protects the rights of the individual who has rights? My city does not have rights, my county does not have rights, the state of Georgia has no right to do anything in particular, it merely has power. And that's why I do not agree with the inclusion of political entities in this motion, thank you. May I make a friendly motion then? What? Mr. Johnson, were you wanting to speak? So let's, okay. have let's take Ted's. Uh, to make this even simpler, instead of saying the right to political succession, why don't we say something more to the effect of the principle of political succession? Because if it's not a right for everyone, it's a principle, and everyone can get on board with the principle, yes? So I would, I would make 
a motion to amend it to say we recognize the principle of political succession. Is there a second to amend rather than saying the right to, saying the principle of? Sorry, who was that? Yeah. Any objection? Uh, you would have to vote to suspend the rules to uh, make the amendment now. Uh, and if there's no objection... So it's, it's a friendly amendment, right? So I can well, make that's it. it. If without objection, we move on. But if there is objection to this change, we'd have to suspend the rules to... Yeah, I don't think I've heard anybody object. Not unless you just have to ask. Okay. Right. Did I not already? No. Okay. I didn't ask. I swore I did. All right. Is there an objection to Mr. Metz's friendly amendment? Okay. So right that, is stronger than the principle. It always says, oh wait, can I come to the microphone? You, you can, yeah, I think it'd be easier to hear you. Well, this is simply the objection just says we need yeah. to suspend the rules of discussing. But so you can, um, she can speak say, to it at, if it passes. So we don't have to waste any more time on that. Yeah, so. Should I or should I not? Um, not right now. All right. Sorry. So with a friendly amendment, it would be up to the person who submitted it, whether to accept it or not, in a case like this, correct? Yes. All right. I'm going to keep it as it is. That's all right. That's all right. And did you want to speak against the uh, proposal? The amendment. All right. Oh. You're right, this. Greetings, everybody. My name is Ben Young. I'm the chair for the Greater Athens Libertarian Party affiliate. Um, in our current, one of the things I wanted to read out loud was our current uh, platform, specifically 1.1, and I'll even read the preface to that as well. It says, Individu individuals are inherently free to make choices for themselves and must accept responsibility for the consequences of the choices that they make. Now, politics is not about an association. It's about your voluntary collection coming together under a, a, a single idea or ideas. Right? So every one of us here voluntarily came to this party, the Libertarian Party. We can voluntarily already leave and go to another party if we so choose. So the secession of, of political association is unnecessary even by its definition because there is no laws that already require us to affiliate with a party or political grouping already. Section 1.1 of our platform already says, individuals own their own bodies and have rights over them that other individuals, groups, and governments may not violate. This is the same thing that's already speaking to this. And therefore, the, the amendment in and of itself speaks to things that are already in existence in our Constitution. Our Constitution already says that those freedoms and those, those um, what are the, the constitutional enumerated powers, if those aren't listed, they are delegated and relegated to the states or the people respectively. Secession is already one of those things in our Constitution. We have tried that. We went to war. We did it. You know, it didn't work. But it's already listed. These things are not necessarily required to be pulled out because they are already listed. And we as libertarians, we, we, we try to uphold the Constitution as best as we can because it is a guiding principle document. Now. The other thing I want to point out is there are cases when it's necessary to have a secession clause. I speak specifically to our own chapter bylaws with the, Athens, the Greater Athens Libertarian Party. We are a, 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 a grower, right? We have nine counties in our, in our affiliate. We recognize the fact that, hey, we're going to try and grow counties one through nine to become their own affiliate. That's what we're going to try and do. So we intentionally wrote in secession clause to allow them to be able to say, hey, we are the members of this county, we want to be able to secede, create our own affiliate, or we don't want to be associated with your affiliate in any way. That would be a proper utilization of a secession bylaw. So therefore, secession by putting them into the platform is unnecessary in whole and in part, simply because those things are already defined by either the Constitution or by our platform already. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you ben. Uh, I think we have time for one more speaker. If anyone would like to speak for or against, two minutes. If not, okay. You're recognized. So are you speaking for or against? Um, I'm speaking, I'm not sure what we're in right now, but 
I'm speaking against, or I guess for, the amendment to keep it as individuals. Sorry, we moved on from that. We're okay. now uh, debating the platform as a whole. Okay. We're not debating an amendment right That's now. That's fine. I didn't That's right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Two minutes. Is, uh, is this a way of uh, an ex post facto uh, approval of the Georgia State uh, Secession Ordinance? I don't know anything about that, so that was not my intent. And this uh, uh, statement that you're reading predates that I'm fairly certain. I'm not 100% what you're, what you're referring to, but this is from like... The, the secession ordinance of 1860. Oh, never mind. It does not predate that. <laughs> <laughs> but I do not believe that this had anything to do with Georgia when it was written because it was in the... More or less, not these exact words, but some of the exact words were taken from the Libertarian National Platform of, I want to say, sometime in the 70s. And this also appears in the California Platform. Uh, so I don't believe Georgia would have been in their minds, really. Nathan? I, I, like one minute. I'm going to officially. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Wilson, I'm going to just. I'm going to say speak against it, but I'm going to say I love this thing. Uh, I'm just going to caution against it uh, because uh, one reason we have the non-aggression principle that is part of the national and state parties is because the fear at the Washington and national level of violent uprising from political groups. Uh, and is known in Washington, uh, we had targets of Tea Party groups and other things. We have a new administration in there. It seems to be hard-edged on targeting groups. I think this may give them an excuse to kind of give up uh, their hire. Uh, again, I love this wording. I like the amendment in general. But as someone who has represented the party, I know what we put out there does and can draw attention. It is not what you intend, it is what people perceive. And so I just wish you would just think about that as you vote. Uh, I'm actually going to abstain on this vote uh, in general. Uh, but I do just caution that in general. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. All right, that concludes the time allotted for debate. We'll move on to voting on this um, platform as it stands. So all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed? No way. Okay. That sounds like two-thirds to me. It's your rule and go for it. That's good. So the motion carries. All right, election of party officers. So we will start with nominations from the floor for chair. And uh, I'll just go ahead and start off that before Ryan had to leave, he uh, submitted to me his nomination signed by three people in writing. So Ryan Graham is nominated for chair. Um, would anybody else like to nominate somebody for the role of chair? Uh, please come to the microphone, or stand up and enunciate. I nominate Ted Metz. Is there a second for the nomination of Ted Metz? Second. Second. You don't need a second. Oh, you're, you're correct. Thank you. So Ted Metz has been placed into nomination for chair. Are there any other nominations? I would like to nominate Noda. Noda is always an option, and will be this time. So we have Ryan Graham, Ted Metz, and Noda. Would anybody else like to place a name in to nomination for chair? All right, hearing none, we'll move on. So each candidate will get five minutes to speak. And before he had to leave, Ryan told me that he was not interested in speaking and it was going to go long enough anyway. So there's that. And Yay! I think that's what he expected. So, um, unless anybody really wants to get up and speak for Ryan, they can have their five minutes, or his five minutes. I can speak for him. All right. Uh, Mr. Oliver is recognized to speak for Ryan Graham. Sorry, I'm not going to waste any time, but uh, if any of you have been involved in the party in the last couple of years, you know how hard of a worker Ryan is, uh, how dedicated he is to this party, uh, and how much he is committed to growing this party. 
He wants to grow us affiliate by affiliate, member by member, uh, brick by brick, build this party up to be one of the strongest state parties in the nation. And uh, I think he's done really great work in the last few years doing that. And I would like to uh, give him that vote of confidence to have him continue doing that work. And I hope all of you can uh, vote to support Ryan for state chair for uh, another term. Thank you. Yeah, hey! yeah. Right, is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor of Ryan? I would. Yeah, come to the microphone, please. Yeah, probably four minutes. Oh gosh, let me get up here. I don't even think I'm tall enough to say. <laughs> um, I would, I obviously work very closely with Ryan. Um, and have for the last year. He's probably one of my favorite people. Ted is also one of my favorite people, so this <laughs> makes it really hard. Um, but I can attest to my testament of Ryan. I'm just y'all can hear me. I'm gonna attest to my testament of Ryan when I've had an affiliate for the last five, six years in Northwest Georgia. And Nathan actually can tell you when I stumbled upon um, everything, you know, beforehand, we didn't have a lot of help from the state. So we just kind of did our own thing in Northwest Georgia. Um, when my page was written down at the beginning of, like, when everybody's pages, before everybody's pages started getting written down, mine was written down first, my affiliate page, with over 500 people on it. And so I reached out to the state and came across Nathan and Danny and Ryan. And while they helped lead me in the right direction and what I needed to do and like putting everything back together, so that's when Ryan like scooped me up and was like, hey, we need help doing this, we need help doing this. Ryan, I am here and I have been as active as I have been because Ryan gave me the tools and stood in my corner and believed in me and helped push me along and was there through everything. Even when I was feeling like I was feeling seriously, Ryan's, no, you've got this, you've got this, you've got this. People like me and Jeffrey, who's part of my affiliate, and a lot of the affiliates that are growing right now are because Ryan is there in their corner. And people like me are empowered by that. So for me, Ryan is why I'm so active and a lot of why I'm here and why I think that he should remain chair so that we can continue to grow. The work that I see him put in far exceeds, I do not envy him, I will never run for chair, y'all will never see that for me. <laughs> far at the exceeds like what some of the most active people do. And so I really hope that you will vote him in again so we can continue moving forward and especially continue to grow these affiliates. And I know in 2022, we have a lot of candidates stepping up to run, and Ryan is right there helping them. I want to keep seeing us move forward, and I know he has that vision for us to move forward. So vote for Ryan. And I also love Ted, though, too, so there's, I feel like that. <laughs> Thank you. Matt, if anybody wants to, one minute and 30 seconds left for nominating speeches for Ryan Griffin. If not, Hearing none, we'll move on to 10 minutes. You have a total of five minutes. I'll step up to the podium. All right. All right, excuse me. I agree with Angela. Ryan is a wonderful person. He's been very good at growing all of our affiliates and such. And I appreciate that. And if he does not win chair, I would certainly demand as non-aggressively as possible that he stay in as an affiliate coordinator and an affiliate helper, etc. Uh, again, he has done a lot of things and we, we have moved forward. We need more membership. We need to like grow our party as, as everyone recognizes already. One of the things that I think we've kind of been missing opportunities to be more politically engaged with some of the nutty, tyrannical local level things that have been going on. My proposal is to get more organized in city council, in county government, and actually grow the party with activists that actually are interested in changing policy, changing law, changing you know policies and procedures that we're facing every day. We're still in the debate for ballot access. We're still in the debate for free and fair elections. Like hand marked paper ballots is still a big issue for us as well as medical cannabis, recreational cannabis, gambling, and all sorts of other things. We're just not participating at the capital 
or, or getting ourselves in the news enough to allow other people throughout the country to know what our brand is. One of the things that, that I think we still have the opportunity to do is to vocalize our branding. You can walk up to anyone on the street and say, what's, what's a libertarian? And basically they'd say, oh, it's just a Republican that wants to smoke pot. Well, that's maybe a small portion of it. For a lot of you, that may be more than a small portion. But the thing that we need to do is really get ourselves branded so that everyone, when asked what they think a libertarian is, they know it's someone who wants to be left alone, to be not taxed, and not to be aggressed against, not to cause harm. And, and that's what people need to know, that we really are about the Constitution and making sure that the Constitution, especially Article 1, Section 8, is upheld. Because the government has grown so far outside of the box, not only on the federal level, but also the state level. We need to start calling this out. We really need to start educating people about the way the government was designed by our founders, who are extraordinarily well-educated in philosophy, in government, and in, in most things that people have to take a doctorate degree to understand. We are no longer a nation of polymaths, you know, people that know more than one subject. We become a nation of individual boxed in groups that identify with one group, one specific group. Instead of being part of a whole, they're part of a tiny part, which, which is a divide and distract technique the Romans have been using, of uh, uh, governments worldwide have been using forever. So we need to really focus on teaching and educating about what we have, how it should work, and how we can empower ourselves to stand up and make it work the way it was designed. Every problem that we have in America today has to do with them being outside of their constitutional constraints. I was going to actually borrow one of Martin's uh, constitutions. If you look at the header of the Bill of Rights, any good Constitution has the preamble to the Bill of Rights, which is a reminder that the Constitution is a restriction on government. And again, the power is derived from the people. When the creation, which is the federal government, outgrows its creator, there's a problem, and we really need to stuff it back in the box. Now more than ever. I think every day on the news we have more and more bad news about what's, what's coming down the pipe rising gas prices, war in the Middle East, blah, blah, blah. All of that stuff could be prevented if we just stood up and, and networked all of our network contacts to make a voice united in that we no longer want federal government to have the power that it has. We can make them shorter. All right, we're coming up on four minutes, 30 seconds. I will conclude my remarks with saying I would be very happy to serve as chair again. If not, I will not uh, step away from the party. I'll still be an active member, and, and I'll still continue with my activism. So thank you for your consideration. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Metz. So that concludes, would anybody like to speak in favor of NOTA? All right. Here we go, NOTA. <laughs> All right. So that concludes the nominating speeches, and we will move on to voting. I think we're good. So the secretary will uh, count and certify the votes, and we'll have results soon. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the vice chair election. Um, since I'm the current vice chair, and I'm not sure if anybody's going to run, I'm going to hand the gavel over to Stephen and Kayla. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For those who don't know me, my name is Stephen Nikhail, your Region 2 representative to the LNC. And I'm going to be leading um, you guys through the vice chair nominations. So first off, we're going to go ahead and open up the floor to nominations by anybody like to be recognized. There in the back, state your name and... Elizabeth Milton, I nominate Zach right now. All right, we have a... I second. And we've got a nomination for Zach. Any other nominations, the floor is open. 
Oh, was that you accept? Sure. Except not an answer. Enthusiastic. An enthusiastic yes. Any other nominations? Yes, sir. I'd like to nominate Nathan Wilson. What's your answer? Nothing. And you'd like to nominate Nathan Wilson? All right. Nathan Wilson, more in, sir? I'll respectfully decline. All right. He's respectfully decline. An enthusiastic decline. <laughs> yes, sir. I have a question. Yes. Honestly, what fixed me down with the chair is thanks mm -hmm. There's a possibility that the person doesn't mean we'd like to nominate. Should we wait for the count's done? I concur. Would it be too well? I would like to nominate the person who doesn't win the chair. <laughs> so you're asking is if the folks that if we were to count the nominations for chair first, well, let me ask is would would uh, I can does, uh, does, uh, does the Georgia bylaws cover this? Um, no, no, they make bylaws. They, well, I have a set right here. Let me preface that with do. Would, would you accept writing for? Uh, I'm, I'm actually chair. trying to get Ryan on the phone to see if okay. he'd accept. Okay. So, um, right now I'm going to say it's not in order unless we hear back from Ryan and any other gentleman on uh, on whether or not that we can that they even accept it uh, going to vice chair position. But in the meantime, is there any other nominations for vice chair? Going once. Yes, ma'am. I don't move. Okay. So how about this? Move to suspend the rules to call for a recess until the chair votes are counted. All right, we have a motion to suspend the rules which requires a three quarters vote um, in order to, for the purpose of going into a recess for how long? Until we finish the count. Until we finish the count. Point, point of information. Point of information. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Ted or Brian can also run for the chair, but will automatically remove from the ballot if they win the officer position, unless they step down from the elected position. That's true. That's true. We have results. Yeah. Uh, well, we have results, so I guess it's uh, <laughs> yeah. all right. Gay style. All right. The secretary would come up. Close, y'all. We have three Noda, 17 for Ted, and 19 for Ryan. So Ryan is the chair. Thank you, Ms. Secretary. Congratulations to Ryan. Um, the floor is still open for nominations. Is there any other nominations for the vice chair of the board? I nominate Ted Betts. What's your name, then? All right, Ted Metz, do you accept the nomination? I, I accept. Glad he accepts. All right. Nominations going once. I nominate Zach Barnell. Zach Barnell, what's your name, sir? He's our Oh, okay. Yes, sir. What about that? Uh, point out, Can we get the nominees' names up there on the board? Ms. Secretary, are we able to put the nominees' names up on the board? Yes, yeah. Yes, sir. You got all the information up there? I'll get that. All right. Any other nominations? <laughs> Going once. Going twice. Going three times sold. We're going to go ahead and close nominations. We'll get the names up on the screen. Play the timeline for sources. There's no time limit for speeches unless someone moves for their two. Oh, there. Oh, there is. Oh, I'm sorry. I think what? it's three minutes. Is it three minutes? Okay. My apologies. I don't have a slide Okay. Is that per bylaws? Yes. Okay. So three minutes. So would Mr. Would Zach would like to come up first and give a sure. talk about yourself for three minutes? Is Chad the other nominee? I'm sorry. It was the other nominee, Ted. Yes. Okay. Ted, and then. Yeah, actually, if the nominees would like to line up, we can go through one by one and knock them down. Great. 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 So we're going to name off the the nominees. Just make sure we got everybody. If there's a name we missed, then we'll put it up on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Zach, you've got 
So, I would be more than happy to uh, be vice chair or to be at large or regional rep. We can go Ted. That's fine. Uh, I just stepped up to be vice chair because nobody else was doing it, but now that Ted wants to do it, I think that's awesome. So, there we go. That's my speech. <laughs> And the candidate yields the balance of his time. <laughs> Mr. Ritz, three minutes, sir. Thank you for that glowing speech, Zach. I just stepped up because nobody else wanted to do it, so <laughs> I would faithfully discharge the duties of the vice chair if elected. Otherwise, you can vote for Zach and make him actually work. <laughs> so anyway, I, I really do look forward to having a wonderful 2021 for the remainder of the year. So. Irregardless, we have a wonderful group, and I'm hoping some people are going to step up and be parts of the executive committee because that's what we really need people to help is on the committees, the all of the all of the committees. We need we need people to actually get involved and do stuff. So whether or not I'm chair, I'm still going to or vice chair if I'm not elected, not a problem. I'm still going to be active on the executive committee, trying to get things moving forward to continue to grow the party. And with that, I'll yield back to Mr. Nikayla. Thank you, sir. What are we going to do with all this free time? <laughs> all right. So, here are your candidates. And of course, NOTA is always an option. In the event of NOTA, none of the candidates on the board would have the position. They would not be able to rerun, and there would be a new cast of uh, nominations would be reopened. So that is NOTA. So go ahead, take your card, put down your ballot, um, and then come on down to the secretary's table and uh, cast your vote. Thank you for that. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Has everybody casted their ballot? <laughs> All right, it sounds like it. Um, since I'm already up here on the podium, I'm gonna go ahead and give the Region 2 report for the LNC. So I'm just going to go ahead and update you guys on a few things, what's going on at the national level, what have we been up to for the past year, and if you have any questions, we'll open up for questions at the end. A few things to note. From the LNC, this has been a great term so far. We've got our chairman, Mr. Joe Bishop Henchman, here in the audience with us today. Uh, a really great board, a really great group that I'm very happy that we're putting together. And, Quite frankly, I thought the momentum would die down after election season. It just hasn't been the case. Uh, right now, we're at a 10-year high in national dues-paying members, which is phenomenal. <laughs> Membership uh, increased about 30% in 2020 alone. Um, and, um, and we're continuing to increase our fundraising, increase our membership levels. So a few things I want to go through to, to highlight on. Uh, the 2020 election season, the Libertarian Party was able to elect one in five municipal uh, Libertarian <laughs> So that's 20%, so congratulations, those are great numbers, and they continue to grow. We had our first Libertarian State uh, House Legislature in office in Wyoming. Correct? Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is phenomenal, that is thanks to the Libertarian Frontier Project which continues to pave the way towards libertarian success throughout the country, and we're continuing to grow that program and invest in that program and our candidate support to continue to get elected libertarians in office. We're starting to look more towards uh, municipal elections as well, but we're still keeping some focus on those upper ticket elections, which are phenomenal. Um, Bethany Valdez, who also ran for state rep in Wyoming, fell short just 32 votes, but that just shows you how close we are to really peering into the, um, the state house legislature in some states. Not to mention the Libertarian Frontier Project knocked on 42,000 doors and 52,000 hours of airtime. Uh, the project is just really exploding and it's phenomenal. 
We employ eCanvasser, which by the way is open to any libertarians throughout the country. eCanvasser is a system that the LMC is subsidizing to make it easier for you as candidates to run for office using state-of-the-art software at a fraction of the price that would normally be to go out there and get it yourself. So if you're interested in eCanvasser, get in touch from myself or someone else from National and we'll make sure you get on the program. If you're running for office, it's very important that you do that. Candidates who do are, perform markedly better than those who do not. Other than that, monthly pledges are up in 2020. We ended the year at around 1,400 uh, monthly pledgers. And so far in 2021, we're at 2,116 monthly pledgers. So support for the party continues to grow. The Jorgensen momentum continues to increase and, and those folks flooding to the party. Uh, Georgia, luckily, is going to get some data from the, from the campaign. Um, so. You guys are going to get some great data of the campaign purchase to be able to use in your campaigns and within your state party, so we'll keep you updated there. And we'll also be getting the data from the Joe Jorgensen campaign to use throughout the country. So really valuable stuff. Right now, um, also if you're interested, the Jorgensen campaign is running a program where you can use their data, their campaign list, and have Joe Jorgensen email that entire list for Georgia to be able to bring out whatever message you guys want, whether it's a state uh, office election or fundraising or whatever it might be, um, that option is available. For interest in that, reach out to me. I can get you in touch with the right people uh, for that campaign. There's going to be regional training, so Region 2, Florida, Georgia, and Tennessee. Kara Schultz and the, the uh, Canada Support Team will be reaching out to your state to plan some trainings in the area, so we'll be working on that. Um, we will also be rolling out the 50th anniversary event in Denver later this year. The Libertarian Party has been around for nearly 50 years. We'll be celebrating in Denver. Details will be announced soon, but we hope to see you there soon later this year, so plan your calendar for, for later on. And uh, lastly, I just want to mention the LESS program. It is the Libertarian, uh, Elected Libertarian Network. It's going to be an intra-party network, because let's face it, a lot of being elected to office is, quite frankly, getting to the people around you. It's the peer pressure of continuing to be libertarian in the face of adversity. We want to make sure that our libertarians who are elected to office feel that there's a community surrounding them of other elected libertarians throughout the country to grow and help and support them. Because in the world of statism, we need to stick together. And so that's what this program is going to be accomplishing. Um, and lastly, there is a, last week we did pass on the LMC a shared membership program. So that's something that we'll be working on the details for. So um, that includes shared fundraising, shared membership with national and state parties. So I'm sure that um, your executive committee will be working with us on those grounds. So that's mostly it, folks. Um, is there any questions for me? Mr. Require, you recognize? Yes, sir. You mentioned when Tennessee had their convention, so you mentioned Florida's going to have our convention. You have to have everybody. Yes. Reno. Want to talk about the next next? Yes. Reno is going to be in 22. 22 in what month? May. 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 Yeah. So 22 in May, we're going to be in Reno, Nevada, which is just a short drive from Lake Tahoe. So if you're interested, Please come and you know book a few extra days to come check out the lake. It's a beautiful area. And in 2024, we will we already have our convention locked in for Washington D.C., which is phenomenal because we are press members. Um, D.C. is the hub of all these press companies, all these media outlets are right there. And the hotel we're staying at is actually was built during the Cold War. So underground, there's actually a uh, a nuclear missile bunker. And the, the, the hallways are curtains all designed around. So just in case, you know, we'll feel safe that we're there in case of a nuclear outbreak. Um, so, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And the last thing to mention, too, guys, is that the LMC is continuing to um, hire, you know, accept volunteers into our various committees. So if there's a committee you are interested in, let me know, let Ryan know, and we'll make sure that um, you know, I'll interview you and I'll make sure I put your word in. We get hundreds of names from each committee, so if I don't know who you are, you probably won't get your name out there. If I know who you are, I can make a pitch for you. I want you guys to be able to serve on the committee of your choice. Any other questions for me, guys? All right.
Hearing none, thank you guys so much for your time, and I appreciate being here. It's my pleasure, and if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> that was uh, me fortifying the vote. So. Anyway, all right, we're going to move on to uh, oh, treasure. So, treasure. I'm not sure that there's anybody here who intends to run for treasure, but we really need a treasurer. You saw me earlier try to explain a, a simple spreadsheet. I can't do it. Ryan might be a little better. I don't know. So uh, our current treasurer is Evan Durkovich. and Dirk Durkovich. Durkovich. Something like that. He's a great guy. I can't really say his last name. He's been a huge help and he knows all the stuff that I don't. So if you have any sort of accounting background or maths, Please help out. So, <laughs> so I'll now open the floor to nominations for treasurer. Can I ask one question? Yes. Is, has Evan given word that he will run again? Evan will not run again. He is the And somebody correct me if they know anything different from Evan, but that is my understanding. Angela? I would like to nominate Kim Alexander. She has said she loves numbers and mm -hmm. is an engineer and is willing to do it. So. All right. I'll second that. So yes. we have a nomination and a second for Pam Alexander. Do you accept and yes. qualify and all that stuff? All right. Anybody else like to place a name into nomination for treasurer? Okay, hearing none. Oh, Amber? No, no. Well, no, it's always here. No, it's always here. So we have. Actually, that's really bad, but it, I just felt like it. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta remind us. So we have Pam Alexander for treasurer, or Noda for treasurer. I'll be closing nominations. Hearing none. Nominations are closed. Yes. So we suspend the current voting practices in favor of going for a uh, audible voting. Okay. This and only this because the other person doesn't think it's yes. Point point of information be a affirmation of. Yeah. Or yeah, if there's no objections. Yeah, we're gonna vote on that. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the motion is to suspend the rules to do voting for treasurer and only treasurer by voice vote. Or a vote of affirmation, actually, is that what you said? Yeah, vote of affirmation. Vote of affirmation. And it would only apply to this election. Um, well, I mean, technically, no is running, so I don't think we do affirmation. So just voice vote. How about that? Would you like to amend your. Voice vote, okay. Yeah. So, okay, that is what you said. Sorry. Uh, so, all in favor of suspending the rules to allow a voice vote for treasurer, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Uh, motion carries. We will now do a voice vote for treasurer. All in favor of NOTA, please say aye. Aye. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of Pam Alexander, please say aye. 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 All right. The aye is for Pam Alexander Abbott, and she is elected treasurer. Thank you, uh, by the way, all new officers will take office on Monday at 9 a.m. So, you know, if I had them in D.C., I would still have a weekend to torpedo it, I guess. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Um, right, moving on, we have, we're going to elect executive committee members by district. So this is done through regional caucuses. So what we need to do is separate into different 
couples, different groups, based on where you live in this map. If you're in the brown zone, the green zone, whatever. I can't really see the numbers. So you might need to come up to either Danny or... Actually, what is you here to point them out? Which one is this, Danny? Uh, they, they, that is one is the bottom one. Two is the green. Three is the Atlanta blue. Purple. 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 Uh, four is the yellow at the top. At the top. And five is the light cyan blue. Uh, yeah. West. 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 Westward. So anybody have questions about that? Or does everybody know where they are? All right. So let's do. Uh, this is how many seats each. Uh, Area has. Yes. And I will ask that people who are more familiar with this process in each caucus you know, step up and you know run the caucus. Like let's elect that many people to be on the XCOM for your caucus. So let's do PSC one up on the stage over here by Amber. PSC two over here. Next to my beers. Three um, near the uh, Outround Libertarian table in the hallway, four at the other end of the hallway, and five can be in the reception area. Yeah, and you know, and, and we, will uh, we will do, uh, shouldn't take longer than 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Question, does somebody have to be here to be uh, put on the committee? Um, Nathan, contact the principal. I would say no, but I would say no. 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 Great job, Zach. Uh, uh, 